welcome everyone to week 26 of Hump Day History. As you can see, we are at Twice as Nice in downtown Austin. We're going to be talking to Sandra, the owner, today. And we're also going to be learning a little bit about the history of this particular building, which has a formal connection. So, stay tuned. We're going to head inside in just a little bit. As always, a Moore County Historical Society and Hormel Historic Home colleagues are filming live for Facebook. Um, and all of you lovely folks are watching the YouTube version. And there's Holly, the executive director of the Hormel Historic Home. So we're going to head on in. Or do you want to walk up the floor? Welcome, everybody. We have a little history today. It's Wednesday. Christmas decorations just came down yesterday, so it's a little bare. We're transitioning into spring here, some lovely tulips. Yeah, we need tulips spring. for spring. All right, welcome everybody to Hump Day History. This is Sandra Bell, and this is her store, and so she's going to tell us about it here for a few minutes before we dive into the history portion. Hello, um, this is twice as nice now and I've owned the store now for 19 years, and we have three floors. We have a basement that used to be the bottom of Fanfels, and that uh, has antiques and collectibles. And then we also have um, our main floor, which we have home decor and gifts. And then we also have an upstairs loft, and that has, that we also have Sandra said she's excited to hear more about the history of the building too, even though she's owned it 19 years, wants to know more about its history too. So that's a little bit about what I'm going to tell you about. This is my um, sixth grade history project board that I <laughs> put together for you. We have Holly's vision board. <laughs> um, so Sandra's owned it for 19 years. There's been lots of other things here in this building, but in 1893, it became the Hormel Provision Market and it was operated by George Hormel's younger brother, Herman, here in the middle. Herman uh, was born in 1866. He was actually about five and a half years younger than, than the oldest boy, George. And here's George, if you were interested. And um, he was trained as a jeweler and watchmaker uh, before coming to Austin. When George opened his business, he was adamant that he wanted to help support his family and have them benefit from him, any success he might achieve as well. So he brought them all to town and Herman became the manager and very um, successful, according to our documents, manager of the Hormel Provision Market. Do we know who any of those other people are? Absolutely. George Hormel, born in 1860. I can't remember who comes next. Herman, 1866. This is William Henry and we just determined we might tell you more about him in a coming presentation. He was a Presbyterian minister. This is John Hormel, who served in the company as well, and then the youngest brother, Ben Hormel, who we have a connection with his family, a deep connection with his family. So these are the boys that lived into adulthood for the Hormel family. But again, Herman's task was to operate this market, and he did so for 30 years, from 1893 until the early 1920s. Here are some photos of the outside of how the building looked. Um, black and white and then a colorized version, early 1900s, exterior, and then an interior photo that was also colorized. Who knew you could do that nowadays? <laughs> and then this is a um, copy of a check with their moniker on it. Just thought that was interesting. And some ads dating to 1897, which very simple. They didn't even put the word hormone on there. And then by 1910, they were advertising greatly 
uh, in the paper. I just like little pig pork. For some reason, that struck me as funny. <laughs> Look at the prices. Yeah. Uh, the, the Hormel Provision Market is credited with providing uh, liquidity to the company. Um, they were selling products constantly on a daily basis, and that helped them with cash flow. It helped the, the company survive through some ups and downs in the early day of the company. So it served a very important purpose. And upon Herman's retirement, then they sold the market, which is where our next, next guest speaker comes in to talk to us. Peggy McLaughlin Keener Hello. has a long connection with this building, so let's hear from her. Yes, I do. I'm this was my home Sorry, away guys. from home. I grew up in I'm this building. Um, my grandfather, well, Wallace McLaughlin, and here is Wallace, and we'll have the full version came to Austin from Perry, Iowa in the early 1920s. And he already had a grocery store in Perry, but he wanted to open up a second store because he had a grand, grand idea. And the idea was called self-serve. Before that time, people would call into the store on their three-digit telephone number, <laughs> or they would drop off a list of groceries they wanted to my grandfather, and he would fill the order and deliver them. Well, this was costly because for two reasons. It meant there was no cash flow, so that at the end of the month, there was very little money. It also meant he had to hire a wagon, a horse, or a car, or and the driver that went with it to deliver these things. So grandpa's idea was, if the customers could come to the store, walk down the aisles themselves, fill their baskets, and carry them home themselves, he would be ahead. He'd have cash coming in every single day. Prices would go down. The glitch was women did not carry their groceries home. So he had to get past the embarrassment of these women to talk them into carrying their groceries home. And how he did it, if you can see right here in this picture, well, yeah, you see the shelf yeah, up above here? It went all around the perimeter of the store here. You can see it down here too. On that shelf is our baskets. And if you think that in the early 20s, he ordered baskets from Mexico to be brought up to Austin, Minnesota. Think of what a distance that was. And he put them all around the store. And they were beautiful. And that's the way he convinced the women to carry their groceries home. And once they started doing that, they realized that the prices went down. And of course, they were real happy about that. But I remember reading um, Sam Walton's biography and he said that he read about a store in the early 20s in Minnesota. We're gonna walk this way. We're gonna way. walk this way because we um, are keep losing our Facebook feed. Okay. So okay. for some reason, our signals don't like that spot. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a good spot? We'll, yeah, we we'll try so. it. <laughs> so in Sam Walton's biography, he talked about hearing about a self-serve idea in the Midwest and he went up there to check it out. Who's to say it wasn't this very store that he came to visit? Now, when Grandpa took over the formal provisions market, we to this day do not know about the cash register. If you go to the Hormel, Muse the Hormel uh, Spam Museum, you will see this beautiful brass cash re register. I grew up looking at that, so I thought it belonged to my grandpa. But it could have come with the building, and we'll never know about that. I never know that one. One of the really interesting results of buying, of having a cash flow, was that Grandpa could order things in bulk, and he was one of the first stores, small stores, in probably the U.S. to order things by the railroad car full, like detergent, oil, staples, flour, sugar, and um, that was really unusual. Now, I want to move on to the Spam can, because there's also a very interesting story about Spam. In 19, what was it, about 37, they came up with Spam, but Armour and Wilson also had a Spam-like product that they sold in their delicatessen. Spam was not doing well in Austin, and it wasn't called Spam at that time. It was a spiced ham that they shaped in the shape of a ham and they sold in the delicatessens, but they weren't selling well. So and they had a board meeting, and they elected one person from the board to find a can for spam. 
and they told that person to go to the Square Deal grocery, walk the aisles until he found a can, and that's what he did. And I think all of you here are too young to know what a Mazzola oil can is, but it was tall, the corners were round, not square. And he bought that can, probably from my grandpa, took it back to the Hormel shop, cut it down, and that became his fam can. Isn't that interesting? It took place right here. Yep. Um, uh, and I would like to also say that Mr. and Mrs. Hormel introduced my parents to each other. So my history goes way back to the Hormel family as well. Something that I'd like to talk about is what Christmas used to be like on Main Street when I was a kid. Nothing like it is today. It was bustling. Every single building had a business in it and it was a thriving business. I don't know how many women's clothing stores. We must have had five or six. Imagine that. Shoe stores, men's clothing stores. Christmas in this building was amazing. My dad would turn it over into a Christmas paradise. But it started at the front door. Between the two doors, there was a little space, and that's where the lutefisk barrels sat. There were always two lutefisk barrels, and they were frozen, because they smelled bad. And so they wanted to keep the smell outside. And then they had a huge stash of butter that was back in the dairy department. In the back of the store, they had candies, nuts, and cheeses. And the, I remember one cheese that used to come every year from Wisconsin weighed over 500 pounds. And they would roll this in and kept it on the floor. They had to reinforce the area. And each customer would take a bite to see if they liked the cheese. And then uh, my dad would cut it off for them. <clears throat> and the candy was all kept in cardboard boxes. And you just took out what you wanted. It was wonderful. It was real beautiful paradise in downtown Austin. I want to talk about what's next door because that big part of my childhood was Nimitz's Cigar Store. It was dreadful. It was like a kind of a hell. My siblings and I thought it, this is the way hell must look. It was a door. It was just a door on the edge of the building that went down a staircase. And as you opened the door, smoke started to come out and as you went down 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 the steps you could hardly see what was down there for the smoke because indeed it was it was a it was a billiard hall and it, people bought their tobacco there so why did we go down there as kids because they sold comic books and that was the only place in Austin where you could buy comics and they cost about a nickel a piece and I remember thinking all right, now I've got to make a good impression. My dad's next door. He's a businessman and people know him, so they can't see his daughter reading simple comic books. So I used to get what were called, uh, um, oh, just lost the word. Anyway, they were the classic comics. They cost 12 cents, 12 cents. And that's a lot of money, because I remember the year that my three siblings and I, so four kids, pooled our money together and bought a Joe Palooka comic book for my dad for Christmas, so 12 cents was a lot of money for one classic comic. But I would put the classic comic out here, and then little Lulu would be on the inside. <laughs> the silly comics were on the inside. So when Daddy sold the store, he actually didn't sell it right away. He, he leased it out to Luthold's men's clothing store. Beautiful clothing. A real, what year was that? Thing? That would be in the early 50s. And they really were a classy, classy store. He, he sold the top half of the grocery store to Nimitz's, which then they moved their store upstairs and became a bookstore. I don't know if they still had the basement or not, but on the other side of the store, they sold the basement, half of the basement, and it became Fantel's children's department. Fantos was a clothing department store, very nice store. So that's what happened there. Um, but when, when Luthos took over the grocery store in the basement, they had a huge walk-in cooler, very big walk. It was like a, the size of a bathroom or bigger. And Luthos used it to store 
their woolen suits in the summer so that the moths wouldn't eat them in the summer. It's still here. It was a scary place. Should we head that direction? Sure. Sandra, shall we move to the basement? Sure. The scary basement? Yep. Very stellar. We love basements. I apologize, we lost connection there for a minute. So hopefully we won't. I wanted to introduce Linda too. Or should we do that? This is Linda Steinberg. And she's my right hand man. And she's been a blast. She's been here for the same 19 years too. Since the beginning? Yep. Yep. It's been fun. Can I just point out something? While we're here, your half balcony up Are we there. Are the TV? That used to be the store <laughs> office up there. And there the picket fence that covered that all the way to the ceiling had little spaces between the boards. And my dad could sit up there and look down on the store and see everything that was happening. And it was a big office, but they also stored the spices up there. I remember that because they, it smelled so good to go up there. And my dad, I would sit next to him. And I would say, Daddy, look, at there's somebody putting food in their pockets. <laughs> and he would say, now, Peggy, it's okay. People have to eat. And so he never, never no. did anything about that. And years after he died, I went to my parents' <laughs> home, and there were spindles. Do you know what a spindle is? Mm -hmm. It's a nail that goes up like that, and you put a piece of paper over it. There were two of them, solid, with bills. The people had never paid. They were like papyrus paper. It was so oh, I wrinkly use. and dried up. Yeah. And did I he asked, take credit? I'm sorry. Did he take credit? Yeah. Like the, then they were supposed to pay up at the end of the month, or probably. Okay. But he didn't. He didn't. He cash didn't always. It. Yeah. And I asked mom, "What are these?" And she said, "Oh, those are bills that people didn't pay." And I said, "Well, why didn't they?" And they said, "Because your dad thought it was okay. Food was food." It wasn't like buying a dress or going to the movie. You had to buy food. So it showed, told about the character of my father. Mm -hmm. Do you still have those spindles? I do. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Basement. Okay. So we'll go back here. This is our clothing consignment part. Here is the back part, the employee entrance that you don't get to see. Those are cute jammies. And as you can see, coming down here, these are the big doors that opened up. You pulled this open, and then this is how they brought the ice down. So, and then we go down here, and these stairs are very, very narrow. They must have had really small feet back then. <laughs> Go ahead. And then as you can see right here, So we'll get a better view here in a second. These are the doors they brought the side, ice in. And one on this side. One and then room. they slid the ice down when they opened up those doors. How oh, cool that yeah. that's still here. They're still here. We'll sneak through and then we'll let you do that so Jamie can get it on okay. you too, if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. If we should just sit here. Okay. okay. All right. So here's the back stairs. Yes. Yep. So this brings it back in Well, I wouldn't have gone in this door because it was too scary. All right. Scary. So this is the, these are still here and we push oh, these shoot. down. And this is how they brought the ice down from those big doors. Mm -hmm. They opened up the big doors. But I think also boxes were slid down there as yeah. well. Oh, They're, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But may, mostly they said it was for the okay. ice, which yeah. makes sense, you know. Okay. And that's why they would. That's why they have that big door there. Now we're going down those stairs. Oh, my goodness. And so cool. Yes. bunch of shelves here. I'm not really sure what that was used for. I'm sure they the Ludafisk barrel, something. I bet. <laughs> I oh. bet it was. 
Oh, no, Ooh. that's mine. That's yours? <laughs> okay. But it's a really good representation. <laughs> and see how low the ceilings are? Yeah, Randy can barely stand up straight under here. <laughs> there used to be a bathroom. Is that here? Yes. Okay, and then we come back here. I tilted a bit there. Yeah, thank you. Ooh. And this is the... Here's the, here's the infamous cooler, and I was always afraid of this thing because the store is so thick. Oops. Oh, yeah. They usually get locked in there easy. <laughs> oh, but it has Look a light, that. so that's good. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. So, was really terrified of being I bet you were yeah. terrified. Because I had two brothers who pulled it. Oh, he's come. <laughs> All right, so this is the original <laughs> cooler that. So then this is the big Did the locker. The locker that the that provision they, market used? No, it was yeah, called the cooler. You You're it correct. In. It's No, my dad, it's my grandpa put it in. Though. Well, no, it was probably could, there. I think it was here. Sure. Here According from the market. Sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, go on. Yep. Very low back here, too. The whole area was the cooler. And they had rods here. They probably hung they the hung, hams. Hung the meat. They, yeah. hung, they would have hung the, yep, the meat hung there. Hung the hams. Oh, wow. And then the shelves there. That's very low. So it's sure definitely is. a well there's a step up there, so it would have been a little what's above here? The sales floor, wouldn't it be? Yeah. I think it's like the bathroom area or the so Peggy, what do you remember about the, this room? I remember being terrified. <laughs> <laughs> we I had two brothers. There were four children in my family born in three years. We were on top of each other, and my brothers loved to play tricks, like <laughs> closing their sister in the cooler. And I mean, look, there's no way to get out. I mean, it, it was terrifying. And look at how thick the door is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes. And there was another one upstairs as well in the butcher department. They oh, had sure. a more modern yeah. one. And yeah, we were terrified of that. Yep. It, I, and there were mice down here. Oh, I was so scared of those mice. <laughs> Oh, you have mice now. Well, you don't have any food down yeah, there. Yeah, you made my comment on the way down. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, cool. so. All right. The original locker. The yeah. original locker. The yeah. ironing board department here. <laughs> It's kind of like the hormone home basement in a way with That's all the wires. Yeah. It's very yeah. similar to the hormone home basement. Yep. Oh. Lots of little nooks and crannies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a whole nother back part of the downstairs the over step. here too. Yeah. yeah. You know, Sandy, now that I look at this and I say the boxes were stored to the ceiling, I see that wasn't very high. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah. When you were little it seemed higher. Right. Exactly. Always, this is the original. So, this is the storage room. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they use this for. And then when you walk down there, is the door to what used to be the pantals downstairs. So, of course, you have to have, you know, two doors. So, eggs used to come straight from the farm, and sometimes they were fertilized eggs, and of course, nobody wanted to get that. So. My dad would candle. Do you know the word candle? It's a box about, it looks like a bird, bird house, about this big, this high, solid on three sides with a hole in the front and a light bulb behind it. And he would hold each egg up to that hole and he, he could see through the, the yolk and the white of the egg to see if it was fertilized or not. Oh. And I see these Christmas trees and that reminds me also at Christmas time, Daddy sold Christmas trees, and they weren't bundled up. The branches were not tied up tight. They were just kind of frozen loosely up like that. The whole front of the store, across the whole thing, were Christmas trees oh, leaning cool. up against the store. Oh, sure. And the customers would come in, and of course, they wanted to pick out their trees. So my dad, would, I can see him now. He would put on his jacket, his hat, go outside. Each tree he would have to take shake it out, let the woman look <laughs> before they would decide. I mean, it was very time consuming, you know, and it was cold, but 
that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this go again, Sandy? This door now goes to the um, basement of what used to be Fantos was down here. Okay. And so that's open up now for, um, you know. Your antiques? Antiques okay. and stuff. So can we, we walk can through that way? Why don't we continue and go on. out that way? Yeah. yeah. So this is the area in the basement people might recognize. Yeah. Yeah. Fantos is a very nice door. Oh, shit. Here we are. Mark that. So, of course, you know, Fantos, too, always had to have, you had to have um, two stairways, you know. So, I suppose they have that one for this, and then... And, and Fantos was a department store? Yep. Okay. A lot of people would remember it, and this was the children's part. It was a clothing oh. store only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. a very, very nice. A very nice store. Luthos and Phantoms were first class operations. They really were. And how they ever did that, because the door, the opening would have been over here. Mm -hmm. So, because this is, well, of course, was Luthos and the other one was Phantoms, so they must have had an agreement or something, and then they used the bottom huh. of this. But people that live here will remember going, I remember going to the, that side of the basement for children. For children, you know? yeah. And then, of course, on the other side down in the basement of Phantoms was the teenager stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. We have so many clothing stores on Main Street. Yes, so many. we did. Peggy, yeah. did your father use this area for anything or no? I don't know. I can't place okay. it. Okay. I think it all of you ever got stuff I don't think it was ever open, um, probably commercially, until it was Phantoms, is what I was told, but I don't know. I Maybe just, somebody would know that. I just know that they had to store so much food down sure. here. Sure. And I remember when Daddy closed the store, he had a closing out sale. And at first they sold everything that was on the racks. And then he started selling by the case. And the boxes would come up, up. and up from the basement. And it was really interesting to see the store just kind of collapse on itself, you know, mm -hmm. and all these areas becoming empty. Mm -hmm. And why did they sell? Why did they sell? Good question, and, and really good question, because I mentioned there were four of us children. That meant that all four of us went to college at the same time, <laughs> which meant my dad had to pay for that. But that's when he decided to close the store before we all left for college, because other stores, chain stores, were coming in, and they had parking lots, oh. <laughs> and he did not have a parking lot. And they sold um, drugstore items, toothpaste, shampoo, and he didn't want he didn't want to be a druggist. He wanted to be a grocer, so he thought the time to get out was at the top, and that's why he closed the store. Mm -hmm. hmm. Good memories for you and your family. <laughs> Sandra, what well, are your operating hours now? Right now, we're still doing a little bit of the COVID hours, yeah, so we're just open 11 to 4. We kind of want to wait and see what happens with the numbers, but normally we are open from 10 to 5, Monday through Saturday. So maybe February. I don't know. It just doesn't look that good yet, <laughs> so we'll see what the numbers are, and then we'll reopen um, regular hours 10 to 5. But right now, we're just open 11 to 4, which has seemed to work pretty good Monday through Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So come and see us. Yeah. And the first to... Tormel store. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of history in this building. As a lot of buildings in downtown Austin had a lot of different functions. And so it's fun to hear from somebody who, who lived it. Who lived it. Yes, yes, absolutely. So thanks for sharing your stories You're and welcome. your history. Thank You're you. welcome. And next week. Well, we're a little uncertain, so watch our uh, social media pages for where we're going to be. We have a couple ideas, and we'll join you again, or hopefully you'll join us again next Wednesday at noon. Thanks for watching, Thanks everybody. For watching. If you have Thank any you. ideas of where we should go, type them in the comments. Or if you have any other ideas, too, on any history of the store, we'd love to hear it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know. Or have any pictures at home, or... Yeah, people do, you know, they open boxes and they find stuff. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's fun. People love it when we go to basement and creepy.